Last week, we received a really important update from CBA, which was talking about a potential interest rate rise in 2022, which is a hell of a lot sooner than what we were initially anticipating. So what does this mean for us investors? Look, I think it's really, really important for people to take note of this one. Um, as you said, man, like the Australian government during the COVID year of 2020 sort of suggested that they were going to leave the cash rate, mm. which effectively the cash rate is the rate that the Australian government lends money to the banks. So like the Reserve Bank of Australia right now, it's at 0.25%, right? Exactly. And so they sort of said that as part of like the rebuilding the Australian economy, getting things back on track, they would literally leave this cash rate low mm. until 2024. And that meant for a lot of investors that we were hoping that interest rates would stay steady as well. But yeah. Because the Australian economy is literally on fire again <laughs> at the moment with so many good things happening like unemployment coming down, mm. massive government spending, 500,000 Aussies moving back to Australia last year, which we definitely didn't expect. Yeah, that that's sort of led to a massive undersupply of, of quality skilled workers as well. And one of the major reasons that we read in the report was indicating that this wage increase is going to kind of be one of the things that kickstarts it as well. So as a result of these things, plus so many others happening in the economy at the moment, the government is starting to look at, well, inflation is definitely coming. Mm. And so one of the ways to combat inflation, which is what they wanted to get things back on track, is to start lifting that cash rate. Now, I think, you know, that's all well and good. And the big picture stuff is cool as well. But what it means for you guys and myself as everyday investors is the most important thing. Mm. Now, the number one thing that gets investors into trouble is when they can no longer service their loans or their ability to service their loans becomes more difficult. So if you look at a movie like The Big Short, which effectively is like the reason or the why that we got to the GFC, yeah. you know, effectively the only thing that happened in America is loans were given out to people and interest rates increased or they lost their ability to go and remain on interest only and they went to principal and interest again and people started to foreclose or not be able to pay their home loans. Yeah, so interest rates have always gone up and down and up and down. It's really a government's way of kind of easing economic conditions, right? Yeah, like making it easier for people to get ahead or making it a little bit harder and pulling things in for a while. Yeah, so it's important to understand that with this interest rate rise, like, you know, a lot of people are, are maybe holding onto positive cash flow investment properties at the moment, which puts you in a great position. But as soon as you get a little bit of an increase in that interest rate, it may take that property to negative. And then if you hit some, you know, you might, worst case scenario, lose your job or something like that, or your income drops, it can become really difficult to service that loan. So, you know, for us as investors, we like to employ more lower risk strategies where we get more positive cash flow from our investments to avoid being affected too much from these. And I know you were looking at some like numbers, um, mm. you know, based on however much property you own and what even just a 2% interest rate rise could mean. Yeah, so I think this is important for you guys. So for those of you out there with, you know, one property, let's say 500K debt, which is extremely low debt, but you know, if you are sitting in a position at the moment where you've got 500K debt at a 2.5% interest only loan. It's exactly what I've got on, on a couple of my properties. Exactly, you know, you're paying about $12,500 per year or 240 bucks a week to hold that property, which is historically, historically low and absolutely insane. Mm. But let's say that by the end of 2022, interest rates are back up to 4% and they might hold at that level for a while before they go up again, you know, all of a sudden that same 500K debt, you're looking at $20,000 a year of interest. Wow. Or 400 bucks a week. Now, that's manageable for a lot of people, but at different stages of the cycle, not only do interest rates increase, but the ability to stay interest only mm. disappears and banks will no longer allow people to stay interest only because their balance sheets look mm. shithouse as well and they want to start clawing back money. Mm. But you know, I know a lot of investors listening to this have significantly more, especially myself and Simon and many of our clients more debt than just 500K. Mm. So if you're carrying 2 million bucks worth of debt at 2.5%, that's 50 grand a year or a thousand bucks a week. Yep. Now for many people, 
you know, that are carrying that much debt, that is very manageable with the rent plus their wages. But if that $2 million of debt went to a 4% interest rate, you're now looking at $80,000 a year to carry that debt or 1600 bucks a week. Mm. Now, 1600 bucks a week is just one or two tenants not being in a property for a month or losing your job for a couple of months away from being a really, really negative financial position. And that's why I think it's important for those of you that aren't planning to buy more property at the moment to know that these rates are coming and to start talking to your accountant or your financial advisor or your mortgage broker mm. about good solutions for you to make sure that you've got a kitty for a rainy day yeah, and to make sure you're in the safest possible position because whether we like it or not, these interest rates are definitely coming. As Simon said, it's the number one handbrake they can start to put on inflation. But that said, the Australian government doesn't want to completely put a water on the fire at the moment. They want to continue for things to run for at least another three to four, maybe even five years from today to improve things again. It's just important to note this, especially if you're in a position where you're not just looking at a rate increase, but moving out of the five year interest only period into a principal and interest time too, because your 80 grand a year at 4% on 2 million bucks with principal could be like 120 grand a year, like well over 2000 bucks a week. The hell, so like what I'm doing in preparation for this is trying to build up those buffers for a rainy day and also try and increase the rental income in some of the properties as well, which, you know, can be done in a bunch of different ways, maybe through a bit of a renovation. Um, you know, if you're in a position to maybe add a bedroom or a bathroom on a house, that might be a great way to do it. Or if you've got a house in a location where you can maybe build a granny flat in the backyard and rent it out separately or knock it down and rebuild. You know, there, there's lots of different ways, but just getting yourself into that safe position where, you know, if something does go wrong, you're not forced to sell that property because, you know, referencing the movie, The Big Short, you know, that's what happened at the top of the last cycle. These interest rates got to a point where people could no longer service the debt and they're having to force sell that property for, you know, cents on the dollar and end up in a really bad position. For sure. You know, one of the things that I've just been doing is just even asking my property manager across my small portfolio to just increase my rents without touching it because I know the vacancy rates are very low everywhere except Sydney CBD and Melbourne CBD in Australia right now, mm. you'd be surprised like tenants don't really have an option in many parts to not pay an extra 20 or 50 bucks a week. And that just might be the difference that helps you out. I know some of the boys in our office and some of my friends, Simon as well, like yeah. you've looked at fixing some of your loans to give you security for two or three years on exactly. ones that you don't plan on paying anything off. So there's a whole heap of different ideas out there and there's heaps of good videos on this, but we wanted to bring you this now. So this isn't a surprise in a year or two's time mm. when it does come through. And when I started investing, I know that I was paying like <laughs> seven to 8%. So even a 4% rate is insanely low yeah. long term. I know our parents have had rates at 17 to 22% in the past, which should Christ. never happen again, again, but you know, it's just about knowing this stuff so that you can prepare. Like in 2018, we we're talking about the mid cycle slowdown coming in 2020 and how that would be a hard time, but also a very good buying opportunity for certain people that took advantage of it as well. Exactly. Now we're producing content like this every single week, guys. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date and make sure you're aware of what could potentially be coming. You know, we, we lean on a hell of a lot of amazing advisors and investors and analysts around Australia to, you know, get a bit of an understanding of what's coming forward. And when we hear this information, we're just going to put it into video format straight away so that you guys are aware and prepared for the things that are coming in the future. And then we've also got our social media channels uh, pumped on property over at Instagram and Facebook. So give us a follow, give us a like, stay in touch to make sure that you're staying informed and making better investment decisions moving forward. Sweaty, so sweaty. Oh, that's good.